up fight fans you're watching Octagon Control MMA I'm Dan today we're going to be talking about UFC 256 main event flyweight title fight Davison Figueredo and the challenger Brandon Moreno very excited for this one very quick turnaround for both fighters they both fought at UFC 255 only three weeks ago both made championship weight today both won 24 so 124 and a half I was very impressed Figueredo made weight he has struggled in the past and I thought of it only being three weeks notice that he might struggle. But good for him with the title fights going ahead. Very excited. What more can I say? Notable things to watch out for in this one. Davison Figueredo's got the second highest current knockdown rate in the UFC. He's only second to Francis Ngannou, which surprised me when I read it earlier. And Brandon Moreno has got a win over the only fighter who's ever beaten Figueredo. So, two bits of trivia for you there that I hope you find interesting. We'll kick this off by talking about Figueredo. Uh, what can I say? He's looked so impressive. He could definitely be fighter of the year if he wins this one. Two wins over Joseph Benavidez. Two minute submission win in his last fight against Alex Perez. If he gets a decent win against Brandon Moreno, I think you'd struggle to find anyone who's had a better year than he has. Okay, so we'll start by talking about his last fight against Alex Perez. Very quick one, so it's not a great deal to say. I think it was only two minutes long. Yeah, so he started off, he landed some heavy body kicks. A lot of stance switching, but most of his body kicks seemed to go for the left-hand side from a southpaw stance. Uh Moreno, no, sorry, not Moreno, Perez shot in on the takedown. I thought he had it. Figgy was grabbing the fence, Mark Goddard slapping his hand off left and right. He managed to roll out of it into an inverted heel hook, which I thought he had. But no, Alex Perez rolls through on it. Then Figgy grabs a guillotine. Perez tries to stand up to slam him. Can't do it. Gilly's in too tight. Very impressive first round submission win for Figueredo. Going back to his previous fight before that where he won the title. was talking about Joseph Benavides too back in the summer on Fight Island. Uh, again, one of the most dominant performances I've seen in a long time. He had three knockdowns in this fight and it only went one round. Figueredo, sorry not Figueredo, Benavides did very well to last the, the nearly five minutes that he did. Uh, he, after his first knockdown, he, he started chasing a choke. I think he'd been better off going for some ground and pound. Second knockdown, pretty much the same again. Uh, he got a bit of ground and pound in this time, which I thought was better for him. And then the third knockdown, he took the back. Rear naked choke. Benavidez was unconscious. Bit of a late stoppage from Mark Goddard. Bit disappointed in him there. But you can't tell that away from Figueredo. Very talented athlete. And he's looked fantastic in his last five fights, all wins, only one decision in that as well. So, very impressive fighter. And like I say, definitely in contention for fighter of the year if he does win this one. So, moving on, we'll talk about Brandon Moreno next. His last fight against Brandon Royval. The main thing I noticed in this one is his striking is very wild. He throws big overhands from very far away. And... He leaves himself very open to get caught. Fortunately, in this fight, he didn't. Uh, Royval jumped a guillotine on him, which wasn't there by any stretch. Uh, they both got back to the feet. The striking was very back and forth. I wouldn't say either of them had the better of it. Uh, but then... Excuse me. Uh, Moreno took the back, got him down. A lot, of ro a lot of rolling around on the floor. A lot of messy wrestling going on. And then he got the dominant position and the ground and pound, but uh, Roy, Roy Val dislocated his elbow. I'm sure it's quite fresh in everyone's memory of it only being three weeks ago. Yeah, Mark Montoya popping his elbow back in on slow motion on the TV broadcast. Not something everyone needed to see, but I question whether or not Moreno would have got the win if not for the dislocated shoulder. I'm not saying he wasn't doing well in the fight. But it definitely would have kept going after the first round if uh, Roy Val hadn't dislocated his shoulder. So I think there's a lot to be seen, a lot more to be seen from Moreno there. 
and it's not the dominant win the first round TKO makes it look like in my opinion. Okay, his previous fight before that, uh, Jussie Formiga, this was back in March of this year, the last one before the pandemic shut everything down. Jussie Formiga has got is the only person to ever beat Davison Figueredo, so that's, like I say, a bit of trivia for you. I thought this was a very close fight, personally I scored it for Formiga, two of the judges gave it 30-27 for Moreno, which was ridiculous. I mean, you, I could have argued for 29-28 for him, but there's no way he won all three rounds of this one. His early takedown defence was pretty poor, uh, but he did well to defend a lot of submissions while he was on the ground. He couldn't pass guard, he spent two minutes trying. Uh, his takedown defence improved as the fight went on. There wasn't a great deal of striking in this one, but Moreno did get the better of what striking there was. Again, very wild strikes, massive overhands from the outside. Yeah, uh, he, re he managed to reverse a takedown, which was quite impressive, especially against a high-level grappler like Formiga. And, yeah, like I say, very close fight, this one. I I scored it for Formiga. I could have understood... I, I did 29-28 Formiga. I could have understood 29-28 Moreno. But he did not win that fight 30-27 by any means. So, yeah, I can understand him getting a win just about, but not as impressive as I think it sounds. And I don't think Moreno's form is as good as his recent records made it look. Okay, so moving on to the side-by-side -side of the five attributes I like to assign. We've got striking, grappling, fight IQ, chin and gas tank. All right, we're going to start for the striking here. Got Figueredo. I'm giving it him a striking on this one. Much lower output than Moreno, but he picks his shots very well. Like I say, five percent knockdown rate, second only to Francis Ngannou. You can't really argue with that one. It's a nice easy one there. Grappling. I'm going to say it's pretty even in this one. Fig Figueredo's got eight submissions. Roy Vap, so Brandon Moreno's got ten. They're both very good on the ground. Like, like I was just talking about Jussie Formiga, who Brandon Moreno recently fought. He's a very good grappler. And uh, Moreno's submission defence in that fight was very good. Okay, uh, next up we've got uh, Fight IQ. We're going for Figueredo on this one. Again, just because of how he picks his shots. He picks where the fight is. He doesn't take unnecessary risks, in my opinion. I just think he's a much more intelligent fighter. And Again, I don't know if I'm treating Brandon Moreno's wild striking a bit harshly, but there doesn't seem to be a great deal of power in it. He's only got three knockouts in 17 fights, and one of them was the dodgy dislocated elbow against Roy Val last month. So I don't think he's... Uh, techniques as good as he thinks it is. Okay, uh, chin. I'm going on. Uh, sorry, Brandon Moreno for this one. J purely because he's eaten more big shots recently, it's been a good while since Figueredo's had to deal with anything significant. I think, yeah, like I say, Figueredo's got a decent chin on him as well, but I just feel like. Moreno's got more recent experience of coming back after hitting big shots and I'd be very interested to see if, ben if Figueredo can knock him down in this one. Okay, last up, Gas Tank. I've gone for Moreno again in this one. Again, purely because of his recent experience. He's gone the distance a few times quite recently. He's gone into the fourth round, whereas in his last four fights, Benavide, sorry, Figueredo, I keep saying Benavides, Figueredo's not been out of the second round in his last four fights, but I don't think this fight's going to go out of the second round either, so we'll see how relevant that is tomorrow night. Okay, so now for my pick on this fight, I've got uh, Figueredo by stoppage. I think it's going to be either be a first or second round submission. I think he's going to get a knockdown, take the back, choke him out, maybe a bit of ground and pound leading up to it. But I could definitely see him taking the back rear naked choke. 
very similar to how he did against Benavides back in July of this year. Alright, so that's going to wrap up UFC 256 fight picks. I'll be doing a full video breakdown tomorrow. So, the full card. I have skipped a few this week that just don't interest me that much. The, those fights will be on this one. I'll just give a brief description of what I think is going to go down. Talk a little bit about the past couple of fights. Just a condensed version of what I normally do. I'll link a playlist to the, all my UFC 256 breakdown videos at the end of this. And I hope everyone has a great day. Please feel free to like and subscribe. Very excited for the fights tomorrow night. I hope everyone else is. And we will see you tomorrow.